business, technology, the totality. All right, thank you for joining us on the program. Away from politics now, let's, let's, let's look at other issues around life and development away from politics happening in Nigeria. Joining me in the studio today is Esther Ogumbayeje. We'll be taking a look at who is also an author. She's been privileged. Uh, she's authored a couple of books now, up to nine, nine books. Uh, she's taken the time out, a mother, a, a full-time worker, and also, she's taking the time out to author nine books here in this country, United Kingdom. Uh, Esther Ogubayoche, Madam, thank you for joining us thank on the program today. Uh, when I met your husband and he told me about you that you authored nine books, I was like, how, how did she, do, how did she do that? Has she gone to any other job? How can somebody in this very busy country tell us about it? Tell us. How did you do it? Is it your kind of a passion or do you have any other thing you do? It's just that you just sit down and write books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I work and I'm a mother. You're a mother and you also have your full time job? Yeah. You also have the time to write books? Yeah. It's a matter of determination and being focused. Mm. Yeah. There, are, there are people watching this program yeah. who have dreams. But those dreams are clogged by the hustling and the bustling of our environment. But you tend not to have allowed the pressure, both psychological, emotional, yeah. spiritual, financial pressure of the United Kingdom to kill your dreams yeah. of being an no, author yeah. and a publisher. Yeah. For, for the people watching this program, Madam, what advice, how do you advise them to move on to, the, to achieving their dream in this busy world? Um, number one thing is to have a dream. Then having a dream is not enough. When you have a dream, you have to plan for the dream mm. and be focused. A dream without planning, without focus, will just be swept, swept under the carpet. It won't go anywhere. As a mother? As a, so as a mother, I plan my time. I make sure when I'm at work, I'm at work. When I'm not at work, my time is scheduled. So I know when I'm working, I know the time for family. And when God gives me an inspiration, I go on straight and I do it. All right, let's go through some of the... I, I know you brought three of those books where you have authored. Yeah. Can you, can you remember your first book? Yeah. What my, is it? My first book is Beware of Delilah. Beware <laughs> of Delilah. All right, that's your first book, Beware yeah. of Delilah. Yeah. And your second book? Um, second book, I won't say second book per se because sometimes I publish books not because of how they come. Yeah. It depends on how I'm being led yeah. to, to publish them. Okay. So, like, move on, the beloved, tired of life challenges. There are books that I wrote almost at, at the, the same, same time. time. Published almost at the same time. Um, there with maybe like a okay, year let, let, in let, let's between. Let's look at tired of life, life challenges. challenges. What inspired you to writing? Tired of, of life. life. Of course, that that's a, that is that is an that is everyone. Look, there there are one thousand and one times one feels like. Yeah. Can I go, go home? on? Yeah. Um, I wrote tired of life challenges on the very. I got the inspiration on the very day I was laid off at work. You were laid off at work. Yeah, because I was working. But before then, I had the calling of God upon my life, and I gave God time, which I've forgotten. And I asked God, God, I just don't want to be seen as lazy or maybe writing because I don't have any work to do. So I asked God, God, give me so so time to work, and I was prospering on the work. But before then, God was all, all, always um, also ministering, letting me know that my time at the secular work then back in Nigeria was running to an end. So suddenly I was laid off. So when I got home, it was kind of, oh God, so where do I start now? I know you've called me and I'm ready to do the work, but it's just too sudden. So where do I start from? And as I knelt down and I cried to God, 
it just came to me. Are you tired of life challenges? That's a means to the end. Then I put it down. God was like, now I've let you do your will. Now it's time for you to do my will. And he started bringing the so, messages uh, to me. Your, about the third or fourth book you wrote was a personal life experience. experience. Emanating from you being laid off from, yeah, work, from work and then being tired of everything God yeah, said to you, are you tired of challenges yeah, of life? Yeah. T tell me, so if people are faced with the challenges of life, yeah. what are the steps mm. you think they can take to overcome those challenges? First thing is sometimes when we're faced with problems in life, we sh try to shift the blame on the devil. Sometimes it might not be the devil. God might have hand in what we are going through. It might be the lessons or there's some things that God wants to teach us or God wants, is preparing us for. Virtually, I can say almost all the books I've written, they've come to, they've come to me like when I'm facing challenges and God brings, bringing the lessons out of those challenges. But, but there are certain challenges one faces that are born out of either ignorance, one's stupidity, yeah. um, or one's foolishness. Yeah. Sometimes we may face life challenges because of our stupidity or ignorance, but even in our ignorance, God can still teach us. Like life is a teacher, is telling so us... So that's another book of yours, life yeah, is a teacher. It's a teacher, is telling us that... God speak to us in all circumstances of life, even in our mistakes, in our hearts, in our pains, in our joy, in whatever situation we are passing through. But sometimes we only think is uh, uh, we, we, we uh, God speaks to us maybe in our dream or through the Bible or when we're listening to messages from preachers. So, like God speaks speak to, to us, us even us through, through the issues of, of life. life yeah. So that led to life. that book life. you called Life, life is, a is a Teacher. Yeah. Take us through that book, Life is a Teacher. Yeah. Um, what are the things you'd find that could be, one could learn from life? Um, there are many things to li learn in life in as much as we're living. And we can learn from anything. We can learn from anybody. We can learn from any circumstance of life. It depends on our attitude towards what we're going through mm. at a certain time. So uh, we have the way of Delilah. We have tired of life, life challenges. challenges. We yeah. have life as a teacher. teacher. We have move, move on. on. Yeah. But how did they go in sequence? Life, tired of life challenges, life as a teacher, and move on. <laughs> yeah. so, it's like, yeah. You get into <laughs> the in sequence, <laughs> and then you, you find it so easy to put those things down, and then the next day you yeah. go to publication. Yeah, because I believe in life, whatever um, God has gifts. He, he, he give, he, we are gifted in different areas. And in any area we are gifted that God has given us gift, it's like, it's simple, it's like as ABC. Just like, ask me to talk on engineering work now is, uh, <laughs> I can't. But when it comes to maybe just married in the word of God, God can expand any verse, any word, anything, and something comes out well, well, one of the greatest problems people have in this part of the world is immigration and financial yeah in fact major problem yeah plus including family matters yeah. people who are looking for partners or mm -hmm. people who have partners but are having challenges over their children yeah and that's a huge challenge in this part of the world yeah. not as where we're coming from yeah tell me how does one deal with these challenges um, what I found out in life is life is always about, a challenge, uh, about challenges. As we're moving out of one, you're going into another one, unless where we die. Mm. Yeah, we can't come out. We can't, we we can't, can't actually, actually be free from fighting, from the battle fighting of life. a battle of a battle of life. But we have to make sure we, 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 we are really grounded in the word of God. Because when we have the word of God in us, uh, we, we know how to seek God's face, not as Mr. A did it and he broke but, through. But there are people, but there are people, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for cutting yeah. you short, but there are people who don't even believe in God and are doing very well. Say, for instance, look at this country. Yeah. 
uh, this country used to be a Christian country, yeah. but all of a sudden the, the percentage of people who go to church now keeps going down on the... So now in this country, we have more people who do not, even the so-called Christians, who really praise. And they are doing very well. Yeah. When we're talking about prosperity, I want us to be clear about something. One can be, can be pros prosperous in material stuff, but we need to, bal to live a balanced life and we need a balanced diet. When we're talking about balanced diet, we're talking about spiritual uh, food at the same time as, uh, 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 as a nutritional food that we need for our body. So when we're talking about prosperity, it's, it's possible for somebody to be prospering, to have material wealth, and at the same time, not have spiritual wealth. And that is why when you see some people that are making it, any little problem like this, when a child of God, somebody that is well grounded in the word of God, we persevere, we stand, and we be strong, and we break through, they quickly feel they're, they're mm. depressed. They're depressed. They're and depressed. they probably think of, of suicide, suicide or, or something. something else. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let, let, let's go back to this book, Life is a Teacher. teacher yeah. that, that, that book looks, the, the, the title is kind of inspiring, Life yeah. is a Teacher. Yeah. T -t Tell me some of the things life has taught you, mm. that you that, that's made you put that look. <laughs> I've gone through life, man. Yeah. Life yeah. is a teacher indeed. Uh, I remember the day I got the inspiration for this book. I was going to, to work. I was on bus 177. And I just sat down on the upper deck and I was thinking in my mind what I've gone through and I nearly wept. Then in my mind, I was questioning God, why did you allow me to go through all what I've gone through in life? Even some people, like you said, they haven't even, they don't know God, they don't pray, they don't study the word of God and they haven't gone through half of what I've gone through. And some are even older than I am, yet then I haven't even gone through what I've gone through. Then God ministered into my heart that God will allow us to go through some stuff that are really necessary for us, maybe for our development, maybe to teach us, maybe there's blessings in what we're going through that God wants to pass to reach to, reach to people. And like when we are being comforted, we can comfort people that are going through. And I began, then God was ministry, minister to me, look, it's not about what you have passed through. It's about how I've been faithful in what you have passed through. Mm. And it's about what I've taught you and what I want people to know about those things. Mm. And I li like as an author, God began and I began to put them down. Then, so if I remember something, so God, it was like a conversation. Even though I was on a bus and nobody was seeing what was going on, but I picked my pen. Okay, in this situation, what have I learned from there? Then it mm. began and it began to roll and to began to roll and continue. And so See, you now gradually yeah. put some of those yeah. lessons. Yeah. That life has taught, taught you me, yeah. into book in for people to, to read to, and yeah. understand that when they go, go through free, life, life challenges, challenges, something they are learning really something, something. Yep. and they should understand, Stand. open their heart to, what to see is, what God, God is, is teaching, really them teaching them in, in that the situation lesson. of yeah. life. Yeah. All right, and then so when they now come to understand what life has taught them, yeah. they need to move on. They need to move on, and then you have your book. <laughs> Move, Move on. on, yeah. Because uh, in life, it's not enough to have good dream. The the Bible portion for this mo for this book is Exodus. 14. It's kind of lengthy. Yeah. Move on. It's kind of lengthy. Yeah. It's the 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 Bible portion for it where this book was taken from his book of uh, uh, Exodus 14, when the children of Israel, when they were living in the land of Egypt, they were enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic. They wanted to go out to the promised land that God promised them, and they were happy. To them, when they left, they were happy. They, yeah, we, we have got our freedom now. We are going to the promised land. They never knew there was Red Sea in front, and they never knew that Pharaoh would pursue them. So also in life, we have dreams. Oh, we, oh we, I have a good dream. I'm going to become like this. I'm going to do like this. But at, after the, taking the initial step or steps, the challenges, then some people just 
let their dream die at mm. that stage. They're like, oh, I can't go on. I'm tired of this now. I can't move on and stop. So many people what have What do you say good. to such people? What I say, like what I've said in this book, one of the, 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 the chapter says, move on. God can part the sea. He can change the tide. Mm. We see God as God asks them to move on to ordinary uh, eyes to just mere looking your life. How are they going to go? Because there was a vast sea before them, and Pharaoh was very close to them. But they were asked to move on. They didn't get their breakthrough until they step forward. Sometimes we just need little courage to take a little step forward and we have a breakthrough. And sometimes it may not even be a little step forward. Little step taken forward towards our, fo uh, our goal over time take us to where we're going. Mm. Right. Uh, I, I'm still joined here in the studio by uh, Esther Ogumba, who, who had a lot of a very busy schedule of life. She's been able to author nine uh, books and those books they appear to me they are in sequence what <laughs> is uh, life is a teacher the other is move on the other is tired of life challenges what about other ones the beloved the beloved yeah and uh, <laughs> we have the beloved the valiant people of god the valiant people, people of, god. of god against all hope Hope against God, all hope, hope, hope in God, hope in God, and looking unto God in <laughs> all circumstances of life. Right, nine, <laughs> nine of them, nine of them. Yeah. Um, Madam, what I, I would just say to you, I, I need you to talk to my viewers at home who have dreams, but but they have become tired of mm. life as a result of the mm. challenges they are going through. Mm. You've been able to turn your challenges, mm -hmm. your, your troubles, your trauma, mm -hmm. you've been able to turn them around yeah. into books that people can read and they become a source of income today. Yeah. Not just income, mm -hmm. but inspiring people. Mm -hmm. I need you to look at my viewers at home. I mm -hmm. say something to somebody who is down as a result of the issues of life. Um, what I would say is, Tough Would time, or yeah. Not tough time. They do come to anybody in life, but only tough people that overcome. And as the day, as the night never lasts, no matter how thick the darkness of the night is, there is always light. The breaking of the day. The Bible says, "Joy comes in the morning, even weeping may endure for a night." So there is always a light at the end of the tunnel if we don't give up. Right. Um, in case we want to, my viewers want to read some of your books, mm -hmm. how do we get these books? Um, I can be reached on my phone. Yes. 074-780-780-444-444-54. That's your phone number. Yeah, my okay. husband's phone number as okay. well. Yeah, which is 079-078-8867-29-23. Right. Email and address? I can be reached on my email address. Yes. Esther. Esther. E-S-T-H-E-R. Yes. A-M-I. A M I I S T A M I yeah one eight yeah, yeah at gmail dot com at gmail dot com all my, right and my husband's gmail Jimmy last as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Esther Army 18 at, at gmail.com. Gmail That's fine. Yeah. And if you're watching this program and you need to speak with Esther Gumbaija, you need to get copies of the book. So you need some counseling. Uh, you can reach out 074 780 or 079 8867 Uh we all have dreams. We should do what we need to do. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. My name is Tunde Alabi. Madam, thank you for joining us thank on the program today. Much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Business, technology, the totality of what makes man, man is what we're doing here on this phone. We give you the information that you need from business to economy, to politics, to technology. And that's what we do here on this phone. From the beginning to the end. That is why we are here. Keep watching.